You might be wondering why I was sniffing this twig, and that's because some twigs have distinguishable odors that can help us identify trees during the wintertime when they're dormant and when they lack their leaves or their flowers. You can find these odors by taking a live, fresh twig from a tree, then scraping it until you reveal its inner green cambium layer. Now, once you see green, go ahead and give it a sniff. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at seven different species that have distinct odors, and they're all commonly found in Central or Eastern North America. However, one of them is invasive. Now, let's go ahead and start sniffing some twigs. This is a spice bush, and spice bushes are shrubs that are native to North America, and they grow to be about one to five meters tall. You can typically find a spice bush in the understory of moist forests that have rich soils, or you can find them in ravines or near streams. Now, for hundreds of years, the leaves of spice bush have been used for herbal teas, and the fruits have been used as an allspice substitute. If we take a look at the twig of a spice bush, we can see that the twig is thin brownish gray to green in color and glabrous, as well as shiny and it has lots of small lenticels present. Additionally, we can see that the buds are reddish green and imbricate, so their bud scales overlap like the shingles on a root. There isn't much of a difference between the apical and lateral buds of this twig, but we can see that the buds are arranged in an alternating pattern. Also, there are these large round flower buds that surround our lateral buds, and these flower buds typically arise in groups of four. All right, here we have our spice bush twig, and now we're going to give it a scratch and sniff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to scratch until we reach the inner green cambium layer. All right, so I'm scratching, and there's that inner green layer. I'm going to give it a sniff. And spice bush smells really good. It smells like you've been baking like a pie or something. To me, it's like a mixture of different spices, sort of like um, cinnamon, nutmeg, or allspice, like all mushed together. And also maybe like a hint of lemon as well, like just a whole bunch of different things. It's very like a spicy smell. Um, yeah, it's just a pretty good smell. If you haven't smelt it before, you should find yourself a spice bush and give it a sniff. Now, the leaves, when they're crushed, they also emit a very similar smell. And the fruits, which are these bright red droops, they also emit a scent, but it's a very different scent. When the fruits are crushed, their, <laughs> their scent smells like a mixture between black pepper and oranges. It's, it's very weird. This is a black cherry tree, and black cherry trees are pretty long-lived. They can live to be about 100 to 250 years old, and they can grow to be about 15 to 30 meters tall. Now, the bark, leaves, and seeds of black cherries all contain cyanogenic glycosides, which are very toxic and can cause coma, spasms, or even death. So you probably don't want to eat those parts. Now, strangely enough, the inner bark was once used for cough medicine and to treat sores. Now, you can find black cherry trees in mesic forests or along streams, and you can even find them in dry upland forests. Now, if we take a look at the twig, we may notice that it's a dark reddish brown gray color, about as thick as a pencil with an alternate bud arrangement and shiny. The buds have started to green up a little bit, but they are small, imbricate, and pointed with not much difference between the apical and lateral buds. So just as a disclaimer, when trying to scratch and sniff one of these black cherry twigs is you want to try to grab a thicker twig because the scent can be sort of faint, especially if you grab a small twig, you might not pick up that scent. So let's go ahead and see if we can smell anything on our black cherry twig. So I'm going to go ahead and scratch it, right? And here we are at our green cambium layer, right? So let's give it a sniff. And... <laughs> This has a very bitter smell to it. And that's the best way I can describe it. It's very bitter and it has like a very slight after aroma of cherry. So it's like bitter with a slight hint of cherry and that would be your black cherry twig. Now, some people say that if you take a little piece of the twig and you put it in your mouth and you chew on it and it's bitter, then you got yourself a black cherry. But I wouldn't do that, especially if you're trying to identify a species and you're just putting twigs in your mouth and you don't know what they are, that's a bad idea. So I wouldn't do that, especially putting a black cherry twig in your mouth. I would not do that whatsoever. So yeah, just stick to sniffing it. <laughs> this is a sassafras tree, which is one of my favorite trees. 
Sassafras trees are moderately lived. They live to be about 100 to 150 years old, and they can grow to be about 9 to 21 meters tall. Now, these trees are extremely aromatic, with the most notable part being their root systems, which smell like root beer, and that's because they were actually once used to make root beer. However, they're no longer used for that because the United States has banned the use of sassafras in general in food products because it contains a chemical compound called saffron, which has been known to cause cancer in rats. So it's not used anymore. Now, you can find sassafras trees typically in upland forests, in uh, old fields, or in forest edges. Now, if we take a look at our sassafras twig, we'll see that it is a greenish, brownish red color. It's about as thick as a pencil or a little bit thinner. It has alternate buds and the stem is glabrous. Also, black lenticels will dot the twig and the buds have an imbricate arrangement of their bud scales. All right, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff our sassafras twig. So I'm going to go ahead and scratch it. And here we are. We've got our green cambium layer showing. And sassafras, it smells so good. It's this fruity, citrusy smell. And to me, it smells very similar to that of Fruit Loop cereal, if you've ever had that. And the leaves smell very similar when they're crushed. Um, and the fruits, they also have a similar smell, but to me, it's a much more potent citrus smell. So yeah, if you haven't uh, smelt the twig or leaves of a, a sassafras tree yet, definitely go find yourself a sassafras tree and give these twigs uh, a sniff. This is a tulip tree, and tulip trees have a pretty easy twig for beginners to get down. Now, tulip trees are pretty long-lived trees, and they can live to be about 100 to 450 years old, and they can grow to be about 25 to 45 meters tall. Now, they get their name from their beautiful tulip-shaped flowers that produce enough nectar to make four pounds of honey per year. Now, you can typically find tulip trees in well-drained bottomland or upland forests, as well as along slopes or in ravines or even along streams. If we take a look at the twig of our tulip tree, we can see that it's slender, about as thick as a pencil, reddish brown in color, glabrous, shiny, and it has stipule scars that form rings all the way around the twig. The buds on the twig are in an alternate arrangement, dark purple gray in color, and valvate, which means that the bud scales don't overlap, they instead meet in the middle. In fact, the only difference between the apical and lateral buds is their size, with the apical bud being larger. Now, a good way to remember how to identify a tulip tree is to think of the buds as being a duckbill shape. All right, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff our tulip tree twig. So let's just go ahead and scratch it until we get to our green inner cambium layer. All right. So it has a very spicy smell. It's very similar to that of spice bush. However, this one is a little less potent than spice bush. And luckily for us, the twigs look pretty different. So even though it's a spicy twig, you can tell by the way it looks that it is a tulip tree. This is an Ohio buckeye. And Ohio buckeyes are pretty short-lived trees. They can live to be about 80 to 100 years old, and they grow to be about 6 to 12 meters tall. Now, all parts of this plant are poisonous to humans and livestock. However, squirrels really like the nuts. And you can typically find an Ohio buckeye on floodplains, in pastures, and they might be planted as a landscaping tree. Also, Ohio buckeyes are the state tree of Ohio. Now, if we take a look at the twig of an Ohio buckeye, we'll see that it is quite stout, light brown with an opposite bud arrangement. It also has imbricate bud scales and is glabrous. The apical bud is much larger than the lateral bud, and they're both orangish brown. Sometimes the apical bud will die and you'll be left with a pair of lateral buds at the tip of the twig, and I believe that's what happened with this twig. All right, let's go ahead and sniff our Ohio Buckeye twig. I've already scratched it because this is a pretty tough twig, and I didn't want to do that on camera, so let's go ahead and sniff our Ohio Buckeye twig. And <laughs> it has a pretty foul odor. It smells uh, sort of like a skunk or... To me, a little bit like a green bell pepper, uh, or maybe like a mixture of the two. So yeah, if you smell that sort of like green bell pepper or a skunkish smell when you break a twig, then you've got yourself an Ohio Buckeye. 
This is a silver maple, and silver maples are moderately lived trees that can live to be about 125 years old, and they can grow to be about 23 to 30 meters tall. Now, these common street trees have very weak wood, and they are prolific seed producers, so many of their saplings will grow inside of storm drains or gutters. Now, silver maples are also very flood tolerant, so they can live in very wet places, like on floodplains, in bottomland forests, or along streams, rivers, and lakes. If we take a look at the twig of silver maple, we can see that the twig is thinner than a pencil, it's reddish brown in color, glabrous, and shiny. The buds are reddish brown as well as imbricate with the apical bud being larger than the lateral buds. When the temperature starts warming up, you'll be able to see some round flower buds surrounding the leaf buds. All right, let's go ahead and scratch and sniff our silver maple twig. I'm just going to give this a nice little scratch. And there we have our green intercambium layer. So now I'm going to sniff it. It has, a, it has a pretty bitter smell, similar to that of black cherry. However, this one lacks that cherry after smell. And you might be like, okay, well, I have two bitter twigs that are pretty similar smelling. How do I tell them apart quickly? So if you smell that bitter smell, if it has opposite buds, then you've got yourself a silver maple. If it has alternate buds, then you have yourself that black cherry. This is a tree of heaven, which is the only invasive species we're going to be looking at today. They are moderately lived and only live to be about 50 to 130 years old, and they can grow to be about 15 to 25 meters tall. Now, the tree of heaven was introduced into North America from China in 1784 and has since escaped cultivation and has dominated light gaps in forests due to its fast growth, clonal reproduction, and mass seed production. However, you can find Tree of Heaven uh, typically in mesic or bottomland forests, in old fields, in forest edges or openings, or you can even find it along roadsides. If we take a look at the twig of a Tree of Heaven, we'll see that it is stout and thick, and it's a light brownish gray, occasionally a yellowish red color. It's slightly pubescent, has large heart-shaped leaf scars, and has an alternate bud arrangement, with the buds being directly above the leaf scars. And the buds themselves are almost hidden on the twig. This twig is interesting because it actually lacks an apical bud. It only has lateral buds. All right, let's go ahead and sniff our Tree of Heaven twig. I've actually already uh, scratched the twig because this is a pretty thick twig. And I didn't want to have to uh, let you all watch me struggle on camera. So I already, uh, I already scratched it. So let's go ahead and give it a sniff. And it smells very similar to that of burnt peanut butter. Um, yeah, just burnt peanut butter. I will say you want to try to get a thicker twig. Um, so something along the size of this or thicker. And it is pretty easy to find a thick twig like this. Um, a twig this size is very easy to find. And even thicker than this, super easy. Because Tree of Heaven uh, trees have very, very thick twigs. Finding a twig thinner than this is actually harder to find. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed sniffing some twigs with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.